No matter what else is happening in the world. There is always good news today. Welcome to Good News Today, friends, the program where you'll always find good news no matter what else is happening in the world. I'm Mark Teske, your host for Good News Today. I want to thank you for joining us. And we've got a great lineup. We're going to begin with our devotional time, and that consists of a scripture reading, beautiful singing, and a brief study of that scripture. Today we'll be looking at Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 through 6, a passage that teaches us about God being our helper. Get out your Bibles, turn to Hebrews 13. I'm going to meet you there in just a moment. Well, I hope you have your Bible opened up to Hebrews chapter 13, where we read beginning at verse 5. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? The book of Hebrews was addressed to Hebrew Christians who were at risk of falling away. They had the potential to neglect their salvation, he warns about in Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. So this is a letter of encouragement to teach them. And, and throughout the book, he's explaining why the New Testament system is better than what they had in the Old Testament. Our passage under consideration tells us that we need to be content without covetousness. That word covetousness, free from the love of money, 1 Timothy 6.10 warns us about that, that the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. And we need to be content, satisfied, and thankful that our needs are being met, not whining about what we don't have, but thankful for what we do. And then he quotes a passage from Joshua chapter 1, verse 5, I will never leave you. Psalm 139 teaches us that we can't get away from God even if we wanted to. He is there for us. He is as sure as gravity, as the sun rising in the east every morning. He's as predictable as the aspects of His creation. They're evidence of His faithfulness. And He said, I will never forsake you. That's a powerful promise to His people that our all knowing, all powerful, ever present, and ever faithful God has promised to be there for us. Our job is to do the things He commanded us to do to the best of our ability. John 8, 31, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. James 1, be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. You see, we need to pray like Jesus. In Luke 22, verse 42, 
not my will, but yours be done. Trust in him. He wants to help us. He knows better than I do what's best for me. And once you've done what you can do, let go and then let God. And he promises to be our helper. He's got that promise to keep. He's going to keep that promise. But you need to do your part. Let go and let God. And, and his help comes to us in different forms. It could be through others. It could be through his church. It could be through circumstances changing. Oftentimes, he helps us in a way that we didn't expect or foresee. Sometimes that answer is no, and we need to accept that answer and trust God. He says, I will not fear. Why not? What can man do to me? When we're in good standing with God, we're going to heaven, period. There is nothing that anyone or anything can do to take that away from you. Now, you can take it away from yourself by neglecting your faith or drifting away, like he warned in chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, but nobody can take it from you. And once we get to heaven, we're there eternally and nobody can take heaven away from us. When we have that eternal perspective, the troubles of this world get a whole lot smaller, get a whole lot easier to deal with. We need to trust God. He's promised to take care of us, so we need to let go and let Him do His thing. He's promised to help us, but we've got to stay out of His way allow him to do what he said he was going to do. These blessings are available to all that are faithful to him. But who are the faithful? Well, those are confessing believers that are penitent, Acts 2.38, and have had their sins washed away in baptism, Acts 22, verse 16, and continue to walk in the light, 1 John 1, 6 through 10. Those are the people that are faithful according to the Bible, not man's opinion. If you haven't done those things, you can do them today and allow God to be your helper and fulfill all those great promises. If you haven't done them, those promises are not yet yours. But realize you can do it and be His today. And that's good news for us today.